We're going to have some fun on this one, having a look at a new no-code platform called Unicorn Studio. This is a platform to add all these cool effects to our websites without any code, and I just got access to the beta version. I've been playing around and geeking out all weekend, and I had to see can this work on WordPress? Can we use this on Elementor and Bricks? And that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. Unicorn Studio uses WebGL. It is a JavaScript language. It's the same that Google Maps uses, even Figma uses, where we could create these kind of 3D effects, 2D and 3D, and we could do it all inside of the browser. We don't need any plugins. And looking at their platform, you can see that it is built for speed. I've tested it and I'll show you how it all works. But this is the other thing that stood out to me is that it embeds with Framer and Webflow. So let's see how we could do this with WordPress. And to get started, we're back here inside of the dashboard and this is where we create our graphics. Now you could start with a blank slate or you could choose from one of these templates. Hopefully this library will grow, but keep this in mind. This is the beta version. It just launched, so we got to give it time to grow and evolve. Let's go ahead and just open one of these up. I'll choose this one, and you can see this effect right here. It has this masking effect. Well, if we go, let's say here to the background, we're going to start to see a panel on the right side, similar to what you would see in other tools like Figma. We could go ahead and change the color. We could go to the text and we could go ahead and change our font. Let me change this to Monster Rat. Let's make it bold. All right. Now we could do things like let's change. Let's go ahead and take out this effect, this pixelized effect. Let's stop the, this uh, animation from going normally. So you could press play and it'll automatically go. Then we can stop and let's add something new to it. Actually, let me turn that off and I could go here now and add different effects. Let me add, let's see, let's add, this looks kind of, oh yeah, that looks kind of crazy right there, but let me move this underneath the shape. So it masks and we could see that playing. And then I could also just play the, I could play the shatter. So there's all kinds of things we could do here. Let's go to the text. I could go to the text and start to add effects to this as well. I could go in and, well, we could change the color. We could customize it the way that we want. We could add, let's say, mouse tracking so things move with the mouse. We could do the 3D tilt access. And now that's already a whole lot going on and I feel like I got to jump in and address all the practical web designers out there. I know that you would not use something like this for basic brochure websites, for websites that focus on accessibility. This is all about having fun and something like this would be cool for, you know, those creative websites where we could think out the box and experiment and have fun. So just keep an open mind. Now let's see how we could add this first to an Elementor site and then a brick site. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to choose this template. Uh, I'm going to remove a few things. I don't want the, those wisps in there. So let me remove those. I'm going to remove the beam. At, uh, you know, I'm going to remove the beam altogether. And then I'm going to remove, I'll find out what where the okay yeah i don't want that smoke okay this is pretty cool right here now i do want to change the color so i'm going to go to my gradients let me go here and i'm going to put something a bit closer to my brand color and i'm going to keep it more minimalistic i just want this effect right here this is pretty cool now if i want to add this to my site here is what we're going to do we're going to go over here to export over here to embed and now we have two options. We got an iframe and an embed code. Now I try to always avoid iframe, so we're gonna stick with the embed code. But first though, we do need to add our snippet to the head of our website. So if we go over here, scroll on down to their documentation, and they are gonna show for, we're looking for the web flow. And even though this is for Webflow, this is the same exact script that we're going to put in our WordPress websites. Get the whole thing. All right. So go ahead and copy and paste the whole thing. Let me go over here to my Elementor and I am going to go inside my header snippets. I'm going to put it in the head and I already have it in here. And then you're going to do the same thing on your Bricks website. Just make sure it is in the head. Now let's start with Elementor. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a section. 
And inside this section, I am going to give it a minimum height. So in my layout over here, we'll go to minimum height. I'm going to go to VH. And I am going to make this, let's say, I'm going to make it just uh, 75 VH. I'm going to take it to 80. Next, I'm going to go over to advanced. And I'm going to go down to attributes. And from here, we need to copy and paste in our key and value. You're going to find that over here. Let me go back to the export. Now, you see right here in the embed code, this data-us-project, this is going to be our key. So just copy this. Don't copy anything else, no uh, equal sign or anything. Go back over here, and we are going to start with that. And now we're going to add the pipe symbol right here, no spacing at all. And let's go back, and now we're going to grab the value in here. And that is going to be this in between the parentheses. But do not copy and paste the parentheses. Only this string of letters and, and numbers inside of here. So let's go and add this now right after. And take a look. There is no parentheses, no equals, no spacing. This is how it should look. Let's update it now. You are not going to be able to see this inside the editor on either Bricks or Elementor. You only see it in the front end. So let's go ahead in here. And now we can see the embed working. We see the effect right here. Now you do have this uh, tag. This is for the free version. But if you wanted to, you know, use the pro version, they do have a pro version for $8 a month or a paid version. And with this, you could do a lot more. I probably am going to sign up for this because it's like Spline. You know, I got Spline when Spline first launched. Uh, I still pay for it. It is a fun tool and it is something that, you know, I would love to dive into more and learn for more animated effects on my websites. So for this, it's a pretty good price. Personally, I want to have fun with this and see what more I could do. Now let's take a look at adding this to our Bricks website. I'm going to go here and add in a section. Inside of this section, I am going to do the same. I'm going to give it a minimum height. This time you could use VH. You could put like 80 VH. I am actually going to put 800 pixel. I would convert it to rem later on. But just to make things really quick, I'm just going to use 800 pixel. And I'm going to show you how I could overlay text as well and use this in a more usable situation. Now, from here, I'm going to go all the way down to attributes, and it is a bit easier in Bricks because they do have the name and value separated. So I'm going to add in the value, which is a string. Again, no parentheses or anything like that. Let me grab the name right here, this data US project, copy and paste that, and we're going to put that inside of the name. Now, let me save it, and we'll take a look in the front end. And there we go. We have the work in here. But now, how do we make this usable for an actual WordPress website? Because I could go into Unicorn Studio and I could go ahead and add in some text. Uh, here is the header. All right, then I could go ahead and style it up. But let's go back to export. Let's update it. And if we take a look here in the front end, well, it doesn't have like my H tags and things that I would need for SEO. So I'm an SEO guy, so this would be a big no-no for me. Hopefully in the future, they do add the option to add H tags and make it more SEO friendly. Now, if I wanted to, I could do some cool stuff with this and I could add in some effects to it, you know, where I can make it do all kinds of cool stuff. And this might be cool if you want to build a section on your web page that just really stands out and grabs attention. But if you do want to use this as just a cool background like what we have here, all you got to do is duplicate it. Let me go to my top section, remove the attribute on it so it's not connected. Now in the top section, you just want to make sure that this top section has the same min height as the bottom one because we're going to use a position absolute on it. And I'm just going to add in my text. Let me actually add it into my container. Now I'm going to go to the section on top. I'm going to go to my layout and then I'm going to put a position absolute. If you're using something like core framework or ACSS, I'm sure you got a class for that for bricks. But yeah, all we do is overlap it. Let's take a look in the front end. And there we go. Now we got that cool background effect really easy. We could do the same thing inside of Elementor. Let's go here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to go back to the top one. 
All right, this is the top, the bottom right here. This is going to be our Unicorn Studio embed right here. On top, we're going to add in our content. First, I want to remove the attribute because I don't want that to show. And instead, now I'm going to go here and I'm going to add in my content. Let's go ahead and center this one up. I'm going to go in my layout, justify it to the middle. And, you know, here goes my content. And now let me go ahead and make this text white so we can see it over the dark background. We might not be able to see it here, but don't worry about that. What we're going to do is come back here to our outer container, over to advance, down to position, and select on absolute. Now it's going to layer on top of it from here. Let's go ahead and update it and take a look at the front end. And it didn't show, but this is most likely due to Z index. So let me go back over here. We might need to open up your navigator to move around. So let's go back here. I'm going to add a Z index of 100. And let's update it and see if that fixes it. And there we go. So now we could put our content on there. We could create some cool backgrounds. And if you do want to pay for the $8 a month, then you could remove this tag right here. And after playing around with Unicorn Studio for a while, it started to remind me of Spline in a lot of ways. And I remember when Spline first started out, it started out in a beta version with a lot of limitations, but it grew. And now Spline is just like super dope. Personally, I'm excited when I see these no code tools that come out that enable us and give us power to do more with our web designs. I mean, this is really cool to create these kind of graphics without having to like really master a very complex code or pay somebody just tons of money to do it for us. But then again, I'm a web design geek. I'm obsessed about web design. And when I see stuff like this, I just get super excited and just want to have fun. How about you? Can you see yourself using this inside any of your projects, whether you're trying to do something big and stand out or even more minimalistically, just adding a little bit of flair and touches. And if you want to get started with Unicorn Studio, as of right now, today, it is only in beta and you have to sign up for the wait list and hopefully get selected to get that early access. But hopefully this will be available for everyone. And I really look forward to seeing this grow inside of the near future well that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching